What's up, everyone? Welcome to Daily G number two. Uh, I'm going to review this is what I've got today. Some of the nuggets I believe that I've got today is specifically for real estate professionals, whether you're an agent, broker, team leader in the in the industry, residential real estate industry, you're going to love some of the things I got to say today. And if you're a startup founder, uh, this is how a day might be, um, a successful day. We're having our best December in the history of the company after six years um, because of some of this stuff. Okay, the first thing, because I want to walk through my day, like how did my day go? The very first thing, I still do the five-day morning challenge. I'm not going to go into that today. I talked about that in daily V number one, or not V, G, fuck. Gary Vaynerchuk, I've watched so much of him that now he has embedded my frickin' brain. That's good marketing. Um, I did that in the morning and then I was in an event, the Inman Connect Now event. Shout out to Inman, good event. I enjoyed it. So if you're in the real estate industry, you should probably check out the next Connect Now events. Here are some of the lessons for the real estate people, okay? that came from this event that talked about the trends and what's happening and what agents should be doing and brokerages should be doing. Huge theme that repeated itself throughout the whole conference. There's low inventory in the markets. So what? Create new inventory. That's really the value of a realtor. Amanda and I are going through a buying process right now and, and we love our realtors in so many ways, but sometimes we're like, guys, you get proactive and create inventory. You know we want to buy. Go to the houses that you know are a perfect fit. You have our criteria. And make people sellers, as well as find the ones in the market. Create the inventory, okay, um, for your buyers, because there's lots of buyers. We all know that right now, because interest rates are so low, it's free, it's smart. Smart to buy a house right now if you're a homeowner or an investor. It's smart to buy a house right now because of the upside you will get because of the low interest rates. Like when money, this is what big companies in the world know, when money is cheap, go get some. Um, retargeting is hands down, they talked about one of the most effective ways for any business, especially real estate agents, to stay top of mind, stay in front of the people in their database. You, sh you can, if you don't know this already, you can retarget your database and you can retarget the people who visit your website, okay? It is, this is here's the problem that ha that's happening in the real estate industry right now. The people who provide retargeting services, I think are a little bit overpriced. It is so freaking cheap. To do, and easy to do it. There's blogs on becomealocalleader.com to teach you how to do it. And, 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 and if, if you don't want to do it, totally understandable. Not every business owner, most business owners hopefully should not do the retargeting, but they should get it done. The best, cheapest ROI, highest ROI, is if you pay a human to do it. It's so easy. Just pay a human who knows how to do this you all put the money into Facebook and Google. You just execute it. I'm not paying you a monthly service. I pay a little service to manage, maintain, but just set it up. That's the cheapest way to do it. And, and it's not like some other company is going to, it's going to charge you more. It's going to do some crazy magic that it's going to make it better. Just do it yourself. Pay a human to do it versus a company. Um, but do it. But do it. It's a great idea. Do it. Uh, the other thing that they talked about, a huge theme in so many of the talks, was controlling the consumer. Because if you don't control the consumer, and your brokerage doesn't control the consumer, Zillow is controlling the consumer. That's their goal. So you want to control them. Which means, okay, you need to connect with them before they need real estate. Because they're gonna to go to Zillow when they think of real estate. But if you can actually be in front of them and be build a relationship with them and actually start working with them before they need real estate. Think about that concept for a second. Start working with people 
before they actually need you. Because then when they finally need you, if they've been interacting with you and learning from you, because you're giving people content that is of value to them, like local news, local events, local deals, information about the people who live and work in their community, um, referrals, recommendations, like give people that kind of content before they need a realtor. Because that's how you get control so that when they become a real, when they need a realtor, they go, ah, oh, John, he's the guy who's been helping me. I'm gonna go call him and say, hey, I need to list my house. Hey, I wanna buy a house. And if that doesn't happen, when they go to their friend Mary and say, hey Mary, who do you know is a good realtor? She goes, ah, oh, John, uh, he's a good realtor. You should check him out. He stays in touch with me. So that's how you get referrals. And you can't advertise in that moment because that, take, that just took seconds, okay? And that's how long it takes. This is called the consumer buying journey. It's a, a study done by McKinsey. This is literally how consumers buy anything. We studied this at business school, and I think most realtors don't know this, and they should know this. I'm gonna tell you this right now. I have a full video on YouTube about it, but I'm gonna give you a short and brief about it. All consumers, they live their life, and all of a sudden become aware, oh, I need something, like a realtor. The first thing they do is they rack their brain for the solution, and if they think of you, that takes seconds and you can't wed yourself in there with ads. So that's why you gotta hang out and give value before people need you so that when they need someone like you, they think of you in those seconds that it takes for them to rack their brain. And if they don't know anyone, then they go to their friends. And that takes minutes. So again, you cannot wed yourself in through marketing and advertising to get that client referral. That person who then refers your name, the person who asked for the referral, has to have known you Prior to that, per that friend of theirs becoming aware they need a realtor. That's how it all works. Only after someone doesn't know anyone, doesn't get a referral, then goes looks at a bunch of advertising and marketing. And that is the smaller amount of business that's out there in the world. 60, 70, 80% of people's businesses are from relationships and referrals. And some people go for 90, 100% of their business relations referrals because it's more profitable, it's more joyful. It's also where the bulk of the people are. And it gives you control, helps you retain control so these tech companies don't take it away from you. Um, a big theme, it's COVID. So because of COVID, everyone's talking about COVID and work from home and work remote and, and, and restrictions and lockdowns. So how does an Asian be successful in these times? Relationships with people near you physically, okay? And your personal brand, like what do they, what do the people who live and work in your community think about you when they hear and see your name? That is the definition of a personal brand. What are the words and phrases that people think about when they hear and see your name? That's branding. And so your brand plus your database of people who think certain things about you, the bigger that is, the more business you're gonna get, especially right now. Relationships, conversations, community, connection, these are the new buzzwords. Many year, a couple years ago it was online leads, SEO. There was a moment in time when that was the golden era of just spend money online and poof, stuff would come. That happened in 2012, 14, 15, 16, 17. That's when it happened. Not anymore, and especially not during COVID. Which uh, Brad Inman, his, one of his themes was like, this is a new world. And there's gonna be a lot of things that don't get reversed when the vaccine comes out and things start settling down. It is a new world coming. It's already happening. And so the next 10 years are gonna be different than the last 10 years. So what got you to where you are the last 10 years? You gotta make some changes over the next 10 years to continue that growth. Think about that. Um, 
one of the tech. They were talking about tools and tech and, and, and softwares and services. And it all revolved around, hey, what technology out there can automate things that help me be more human? Not automate a bunch of cookie cutter drip email campaigns. How else can I use technology to be more human, be more personalized? Okay, that was a huge uh, trend. People are using, I love it. People are starting to use task management softwares. We use Asana at Park Bench. Realtors can use Asana. There's a great free version. Same with Trello, great free version. And then there's Monday.com, which is like another really good company. And all three of them are being used. Trello the most, Asana second, Monday third. Uh, we did, there was a survey and stuff. But, but that allows you to, to have templates and follow-ups and reminders to execute a really great personalized follow-up system. And what, you build new relationships, Follow up with those relationships, add value to build it, keep adding value in the follow up. What technologies can help you do more in less time That in that formula? Um, and task management softwares can really help. Uh, that's also why Parkbench exists. Software founders out there, anyone who's interested in the whole prop tech space, okay, agents are not going anywhere. There's a lot of people that kind of talk about it, and I sometimes think about it. And I'm just remind when I, when I the, the industry will move by the mindset of the people in the industry, and just everyone is, including the tech companies for the most part. There's only a few that are trying to really get rid of them, um, and they're having a hard time. The, the agent is not going to go away. At least for like 10 years, maybe then when there's robots or everything. But they're not going to go away for a long time, so the future is very bright for few realtors for at least 5, 10 years. Um, that was the conference day. Okay, as a, as a founder, I get to have the time now, now that I have people who are doing the everyday work, which is like, I don't get to go to conferences earlier in my career because it was park bench because I'm just doing work to grow it. Now I'm at a point where I can take time to engage with the leaders of the community because that's what events do. They help you network and help you uh, build relationships and talk to the thought leaders about like what the heck's going on so you can get back into the business and start implementing things that are going to help. Uh, so definitely did recommend startup founders to do that get to a point where you can do that and continue to do that. Then had a cool dev meeting. So I got a tip for non-technical, okay, I got a tip for non-technical founders who have a tech company. That's me and Amanda. I have two amazing developers, shout out to Jack and Alex, they're amazing. Um, and uh, we have a weekly meeting. It takes an hour and a half. We meet for a week. Uh, we meet for an hour and a half once a week. Go over what they did. Go over what they're going to do next. And then just poof, off they go. When you can trust your developers and believe in your developers, people who are creating a product and just let them go to work and have some fun coding, they will appreciate it. It's less work for you. And let's be real. If you're not a technical fan, you don't know fucking shit. So why the hell are you even gonna try to get involved? I literally don't know anything about coding. But I know how to project manage, I know how to motivate, I know how to sense if a person is moods down or up or what to you know motivate them with or call them out when I can sense they're confused. Like you can just read people and, and help the person be better and produce more without really being technical. We don't spend that much time because you're not technical. Uh, so I did that. That was fun. Always. Uh, really cool updates to the Park Bench blog. So if you've ever wanted to know, if you're a realtor out there, and you've ever wanted to know what people say 
and, and the case studies and the, like what happens when people work with us, go to blog.parkbench.com. That's what's there. Case study after case study after uh, story of like, this is the experience of a realtor, of this one realtor. And we just highlight our clients and tell people what they're doing and what the results of they're getting. So if that matters to you, go check out the blog. Um, there's lots. And I want to end with the fact I wanted to, to let, because I get in my head about this. This is a cool tip for startup founders or just business owners in general. Because I've always wondered if I spend too much time on email and Asana. And so I really like my task management software. If I would, uh, I've gotten a lot better at it where I probably spend like a day out of a week on email. And the reason why I describe it that way is because I actually go days without checking it whatsoever. Uh, maybe a little bit, but like not really because it's just hundreds a day. You know, that's where I'm at. I get hundreds of emails a day. I think over 10,000 a month, it's stupid. And like a bunch of it's crap. Like it just takes time to sift through that crap. So I end up spending a reasonable, I think, amount of time on that. And so I had a lot of time today to do some email and updating like projects and stuff. And I don't think it's a bad thing. Like it's your communication with your company. Like there's got to be some amount to it. At least this is what I'm thinking. Like I have not figured out how to get an assistant to do my email for me. If you have any tips out there or know how a blueprint to help me do that, I would love that. But for now, I got lots of emails and asanas to go through, so I do. And that's what I did today. And that's the end of Daily G number two. Hope this is helpful. Let's keep it going.